Israel Prime Minister Netanyahu has said that Israel will continue with its military campaign into Rafah. He said that the move is required to quote unquote destroy all Hamas militants. The Prime Minister added that avoiding the offensive will lead to regrouping of the Hamas militants. The statement comes as the resistance to the Israeli actions are growing worldwide. The Israeli leader said that the IDF will make way for civilians in the area before the attack. Meanwhile, the European Union is set to urge Prime Minister Netanyahu to not undertake the Rafah offensive. They're asking to stop the offensive. In fact, they're saying that the, the stop in offensive will require the approval of all the EU's 27 national leaders. It will be presented at the summit on the 21st and the 22nd of March. The Israeli army released video footage of what it said were aid trucks heading to Gaza on Tuesday. The IDF issued a statement saying that six trucks of the World Food Organization entered northern Gaza. According to Israel, the vehicles made their way through the 96th gate on the security fence at the late hours of Tuesday. The IDF also prompted that the route change was done in order to prevent Hamas from taking over the aid. Meanwhile, Israeli offensive has displaced most of Gaza's 2.3 million people, leading to critical shortages of food, water and medicine. While Ramadan festivities have started across the globe, Jordanians staged a protest on day one of the holy month. With raised flags and banners of demand, hundreds demonstrated on Tuesday, demanding a ceasefire in Gaza. The protests were staged outside the Israeli embassy in the Jordanian capital of Amman. Separately, Jordan hosts 2.4 million Palestinian refugees. This is the highest concentration of such refugees amongst Israel's neighbours. A Russian missile slammed into two apartment buildings in Ukraine, killing at least three people. The attack in the country's Kriviri on Tuesday left over 38 others injured. According to the city's authorities, 28 adults and 10 children were among the injured. At least six, including one child, are being treated over critical injuries. The Ukrainian authorities have said that all fires have been brought under control. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky was born and brought up in Kriviri. Thousands of Slovakians protested against the country's policies towards Russia on Tuesday. While calling for relief for Ukraine, demonstrators condemned Slovakia's ties with Russia. Prime Minister Robert Fico's government has criticized the European Union's aid for Ukraine. Fico has also renewed policies indicating cultural and political closeness with Moscow. The latest uproar comes after the country's foreign minister held talks with Russia's Sergei Lavrov. This was a rare high-level encounter between a leader of a European Union nation and Russia. Leonid Volkov, who is the long-time aide of the late Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny, has been admitted to hospital. Volkov was assaulted with a hammer outside his residence in Lithuania. The attacker broke the windows of his car and sprayed tear gas at him while hitting him with a hammer. Now, Volkov is one of the most prominent opposition figures in Russia. Until recently, he was also the chair of Navalny's Anti-Corruption Foundation. 
Lithuania's foreign minister has called the assault shocking, adding that the perpetrators will have to answer for their crime. Republicans and Democrats played dueling videos. President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump at a House hearing on Tuesday. The videos provided evidence to showcase the verbal blunders and faulty memories of the leaders. The committee aired a montage where both Biden and Trump misremembered key facts. One of the clips showed the former president referring to the Hungarian Prime Minister, Viktor Orban, as the Prime Minister of Turkey. Another clip showed President Biden addressing the Egyptian president as the president of Mexico. Now, while questions over Biden's fitness continue to make the rounds, the committee called Trump unfit for office over the video. It added that Trump needs to rethink before accusing Biden of cognitive decline. You know, initially, the president of Mexico. On the other hand, Argentinians are struggling to keep up with food prices as inflation soars over 250 percent. The rising costs have sent the sales on a major slip, while people continue to scavenge for meals. The South American country is going through its worst economic crisis in decades. The new government of President Javier Millier is scrambling to reduce public expenditure, a move that has squeezed the buyers. A report from the country last month suggested that national poverty was heading towards 60%. The government has rolled out strict measures to bring down the world's fastest rising prices. In fact, Argentina's monthly inflation rate slowed down to come in at 13.2% in February, which was a good sign. However, the government has been unable to keep at it. President Joe Biden on Tuesday assured Polish leaders that US support for Poland is ironclad. The reassurance comes amid rising European concerns over no slowdown in Russia's offensive in its war on Ukraine. Biden met with Polish President and Prime Minister at the White House on Tuesday. The meeting took stock of the security situation and recent Russian territorial gains in Ukraine. Now, at the meeting, Polish President Duda said that NATO allies should increase their defensive spending from 2% of GDP to 3 percent. Now the demand comes in response to what the leader called, and I'm quoting here, the full-scale war launched by Russia on NATO's eastern border. At least one person has died and over 22 others have been injured in a restaurant explosion in China. The blast occurred in a fried chicken restaurant in Hebei for province earlier today. The authorities have sent the injured to the hospital and suspect a gas leak as reason behind the blow. Video footage from the incident shows firefighters and rescuers scrambling through smoke. The investigation teams are continuing to work to ascertain the actual cause behind the blast. Japan's Space One Kairos rocket exploded shortly after its inaugural launch earlier today. The launch firm was aiming to become the first Japanese company to put a satellite in orbit. The 18-meter-long four-stage solid-fueled rocket exploded just seconds after its liftoff. Video footage from the time of the blast shows plumes of smoke and swathes of fire near the Key Peninsula launch pad. The clarity on what caused the blast and the casualties remain unknown.
Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and British counterpart Rishi Sunak reaffirmed their commitment on trade deal on Tuesday. The two countries have been in talks over a free trade agreement for over two years. While significant progress has been made, the early signing of the deal is still in doubt, with both India and the United Kingdom heading to polls this year. The British minister has said that they are ready to take time to develop a comprehensive deal rather than a limited deal. Prime Minister Sunak also reiterated the importance of reaching a deal on goods and services. According to the United Nations, the global mortality rate among children has seen a dip. The report suggests that the number of children who died before the age of five years was at a record low of 4.9 million in 2022. However, as per the agency, that still means one death every six seconds globally. While the rate has halved since the year 2000, the world is still behind target to be achieved by the year 2030. The report was released in collaboration with the World Bank and the UNICEF. The agency's lauded countries that include Cambodia, Malawi and Mongolia to have reduced under 5 mortality rates by over 75% since 2000. UN partners also added that the report was limited by the lack of data from the worst affected areas. On the other hand, Brazilian police have arrested the person who hijacked a bus and shot at two passengers in Rio de Janeiro. The hijacker held at least 17 people hostage for over three hours on Tuesday. As per the Rio de Janeiro authorities, the person who had escaped handed himself over to police. The man shot at the two people who were waiting outside the bus before breaking into it. Among the two injured, one has been taken to the hospital, while another one is also receiving medical care. The Rio bus stand has suspended all operation following police orders post the incident. Mexican students attacked the premises of Guerrero prosecutor's office building on Tuesday. This came after President Lopez Obrador informed that the police personnel accused the killing, killing the student's peer had escaped detention. Students and members of student organizations stormed the building, destroying about 11 vehicles and injuring at least 20 agents. The unrest first began last week, when the state police opened fire at a vehicle carrying rural students. The assault left a 23-year-old student dead. Prime Minister Obrador condemned the attack, calling it an abuse of authority. The murder was reported a day after students knocked off the door of the presidential palace over the disappearance of 43 students in 2014. Oil prices rose on expectations of strong global demand. The demand for crude oil rose in the world's top consumer, United States. Sticky US inflation did not significantly alter expectations. The Fed might start cutting rates soon. The Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries stuck to its forecast of a strong oil demand growth globally. The petroleum producers expect demand for 2.25 million barrels per day in 2024 and by 1.85 million barrels per day in 2025 and raised its economic growth forecast for this year. Toyota Motor agreed to give factory workers their biggest pay increase in 25 years heightening expectations that bumper pay raises will give the central bank leeway to make a key policy shift next week. Toyota, 
Panasonic, Nissan and a number of other Japan Inc's biggest names said that they had agreed to fully meet union demands for pay increases at annual wage negotiations that wrap today. Toyota, the world's biggest car maker and traditionally a bellwether of annual talks said it agreed to the demands of monthly pay increases of as much as $193 and record bonus payment 